ladies and gentlemen, Josiane Schach. Well, thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. Uh, I've, I've given probably uh, hundreds of uh, speeches. Silence, please. Josie Ashash is speaking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I did a lot of speeches in my life. Uh, for some reason, I feel like this is the first one. Well, question you may ask is, what is space doing at Sid Stars? Why are we doing a space prize? What will start to do in this world of big guys, the Boeings, the Airbus? Well, uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, and my job actually is to uh, show you where startups can help developing space and space applications. So we've decided to join Sid Stars within Marsat to uh, create the space prize for that reason. Oops, here we go. No. Here we go. No, I'm back. Okay. There are, because of these big guys, there are hundreds of satellites which are now circling above our head. And uh, those satellites are essentially providing three types of services. services. Number one, telecommunication. They're providing telecommunication to fixed places as well as to uh, mobiles. Uh, but satellites are also providing precise positioning of mobiles. As you know, the TomTom -tom is, uh, is uh, powered by satellites. And there's Earth Observation, Janine gave an example, which provides all sorts of images visible in radar. These technologies enable thousands of applications. There can be applications in media, in the oil and gas industry, we've seen examples in the mining industry, for the maritime industry, for huge utilities, management and monitoring, health care, construction, transport, logistics, you name it, there are possibilities everywhere. And that's exactly what we at the Swiss and in Marsat are interested in developing, seeing you developing these applications. I'll give you just one example, precision farming. Today, to do precision farming, you locate your engines, your machines with, uh, with GPS, then you use uh, observations from satellites to uh, uh, monitor the uh, state of your crop. And, uh, and then you need to connect all this information, the in situ observation, the satellites send the information to the tractors so that they can do, uh, take the proper action. That is a combination of satellite technologies to improve farm efficiency. This is something which is useful for small farmers. It's also useful for big commodity traders who wants to forecast month in advance what's going to be the production in a given area. So there are huge potential uh, developments, applications, and commercial applications in this area. So a few words about who we are in Marsat and AP Suisse. In Marsat is a satellite operator. It's essentially someone, some of these big companies which is building communication highways, but specifically using satellites. And their, um, the USP is that they're providing communication capabilities where terrestrial networks do not exist or are not reliable. So that's essentially in the oceans, in airplanes, in mountains, in deserts, or in other applications, in uh, other areas. But for these people, because they're not the only company uh, doing uh, satellite telecommunication, things are changing a little bit. They used to be living on broadcast, and broadcast is essentially over. No one's watching television anymore. Let's say in a few years, no one will be watching television. The next thing is really connection, connecting people and connecting things. And actually, the Internet of Things is going to be the major consumption, consumer of uh, telecommunication capability in the future. And this is what uh, uh, Imarsat is is trying to do. You've all heard of the Internet of Everything, which is connecting machines to humans, services, and uh, 
approaching the Cisco CEO, this Internet of Everything will be five to ten times more impactful in the next decade than the entire Internet has been to date. But doing the Internet of Everything is fine, provided that you're connected. And the uh, USP of Inmarsat is not just to provide the Internet of Everything, but the Internet of Everywhere connecting at people everywhere. That's what Inmarsat provides through satellites. They're willing to develop applications. They're willing to see their satellites being used, and so they're making a value proposition, which is to invite you to be developers of applications, users, new technologies, new possible users of a, of a of their satellites. So you can become a, a certified uh, application provider through the API they are providing. You just follow this link, developer.inmarsat.com, and, uh, and you will be able to do it. And essentially, rather than using the old model that they were using where they were providing antennas, receivers, and so on, Right from now, they'll be, uh, they will make their chips available so that they can be integrated in your application, your device, your new technology. A few words about AP Swiss. AP Swiss is the ambassador platform in Switzerland for ESA, and we're interested, again, as uh, in Marsat, we're interested in services, applications, and even in technologies, and we provide opportunities for this. So I'm not going to go again, but it's the, uh, these are the areas where applications are possible. And we're also interested in new technologies because there's something which is changing in space and uh, which is creating what we call now new space. Uh, essentially, uh, and that's where there's room for startups to uh, join the space race. There's, a, there's an anomaly in space which is that the, the cost of everything is going down the cost of satellites and rockets keeps going up. What's wrong with that? And uh, really, to, it's, it's important to understand that because, I mean, taking one satellite, what's inside a satellite? A GPS, radio links, accelerometers, gyros, processors, storage. Well, what's inside an iPhone? GPS receiver, radio links, accelerometers, gyros, processors, and even better, storage. And more, a magnetometer, flux gate, video. So there's much more technology in an iPhone than there's in a satellite. So how come a satellite is $500 million and an iPhone is $500? So this is what's behind this change, this creation of new space, the fact that sm small startups can actually enter the space race and build satellites. And actually, I can finish in this country without mentioning the man who made this change possible, who initiated this, uh, this uh, transformation by challenging the way space was being developed and industrialized so far, which is Elon Musk with SpaceX, which is now competing with the big, bigger guys, and in 10 years has taken over the, the, the whole market of uh, Airbus and Boeing and Lockheed together. So. You're really uh, welcome to join us in, uh, in developing these applications. T to end up with, what we want is you to be free to develop your applications. So the, um, the uh, value proposition that Inmarsat is making and that ESA is making is that you can do your own development and uh, you also, you can be confident, and this is, in, this is a question which was raised with Janine's presentation, What's the issue with future satellites? Well, we've ensured, and that's where the big guys play the key role, we've ensured that this space infrastructure will stay. So it's worth investing in space applications because this infrastructure will be there for the next 20 years. And of course, we want you to be agile in creating new applications and inventive, because remember, space has no limit. Thank you.